How's it going guys? In this video we're going to go over how to calculate activation energy using the Arrhenius equation. So what is activation energy? Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that's required to initiate a certain reaction. And that's abbreviated EA. So here's the Arrhenius equation right here. It's, it seems a little bit complex, but basically what it allows you to do is you can calculate the activation energy if you know K at two different temperatures. And if you know the K at one temperature and you know the activation energy, you can calculate K at any other temperature. So it's a pretty useful equation. And uh, right here, I kind of drew like a graph. The activation energy is where you go from the baseline uh, to what with the energy that's required to initiate this reaction so you can get your products there at the end. Um, so with that out of the way, we will uh, jump into the first problem I have. Okay. So calculate the activation energy based on the following data. We have 300 and 312, and that's in Kelvin. And then for our K values, we have 1.85 times 10 to the negative fifth and 5.76 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we're just going to plug that right into the equation, what we have here. So the natural log, we're going to do K2 over K1. We're going to take 5.76 times 10 to the negative 5. And that's going to be divided by our K1 value, which is going to be 1.85 times 10 to the negative fifth. So you have the natural log of that. That's going to equal the EA over 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. And that's going to be our R value. And then what we have is our 1 over T1 minus uh, 1 over T2, and our K1 should correlate to our, K or our T1, and our K2 should correlate to our T2. So here what we're going to have is our 1 over T1, which in this case will be the 300K, and then minus 1 over our 312. And then we're just going to solve that. So because there's no variables on this side, that makes it pretty convenient because the natural logs there be a little bit more work to, to get rid of that later. But here we have um, 1.1358. It's going to equal REA over 8.31 joules per mole times Kelvin times... I'm getting a really small 0 0.001285, so we're going to say 1.282, or no, wait, 1.28 times 10 to the negative fourth, we'll say. And that's this value here. So now what we can do is we can divide both sides by 1.28 times 10 to the negative fourth. Divide this side by the same. 1.28, oops, and negative fourth. So now we're going to do that out. Okay, so here I'm getting 8873.44 is equal to the EA, the activation energy, over 8.31. So we can multiply both sides by 8.31. Oops, 3, 1. The, our activation energy is going to be we got 7, 3738.2657 we'll say we'll round and then what we can and that's going to be we'll look back at our units we have joules per mole times Kelvin here and then here um, we have our values, our, our K values. So we got rid of K because K was on the bottom and uh, we multiplied it by K. Then we got, we have moles on the bottom, we have joules on top. What we're going to end up with here uh, from these calculations is joules per mole. Because over here it's joules per mole times Kelvin, we got rid of Kelvin, joules per mole. And then we can say our EA is going to equal 
kilojoules per mole. So there's our first one, and then uh, we'll just move down, jump into the second one. Kind of overlap this just so we can get a little extra space. All right, so calculate the activation energy of the reaction based on the following data, and we have some points there. So first of all, just like we did in the last problem, what we're gonna start with is our equation. We have the natural log of our K2 over K1. We'll do the 6.4 times 10 to negative four. And that's gonna be over our 6.5 times 10 to the negative three. Set that equal to EA over 8.31. Again, we'll, we're using that same value joules per mole times Kelvin. And then our T1, which in this case is going to be 347 Kelvin. That's after we add 273 to each one. And then over here we have 1 over 327 Kelvin. So now we've got some math to do. Um, I like figuring out everything that we can first. I mean, obviously we'll start with this and this, and then we'll work from there to solve EA. So, what I'm gonna get for this value over here, 0 0.00017626 Kelvin. It's obviously a very small number. Um, that's negative, and then times the EA over 8.31 is equal to, and then here we get a negative 2.318. So in this case, what we did is our our K, our, our, I'm sorry, our K2 and our T2 were the the um, the second values of the lower of the two, and in the previous one they were the higher of the two. And in this case, what we're, what we're going to find out here is we get a negative number on both sides. So it's going to end up, you know, it's going to end up working out in the end, just the same as if we had swapped the values. So what we're going to do is divide both sides by this. And what we're going to get is 1, 3, 1, 5. 1.03 is equal to our EA over 8.31. And I like ending with this step every time when I can, just because, you know, it's consistent. 8.31. So our EA is going to equal 109.285. And again, what we have is our joules per mole times Kelvin. We get rid of Kelvin, we're left with joules per mole. And then what we can say is our EA is going to equal 109.3 kilojoules per mole. All right, so now we can move on to our third and final problem in this set. There we go. All right, at six degrees uh, Celsius, the reaction rate constant was determined to be 8.6 times 10 to the negative three liters per mole. So the reaction's activation energy is 46.7 kilojoules per mole. What is the reaction rate at 44 degrees Celsius? So like I said in, in the beginning with the Arrhenius equation, what's kind of cool about it is if you have the K value uh, at two different, I'm sorry, if you have the K value at one temperature and the activation energy, you can calculate K at any other temperature. And now it's giving us another temperature that we can use in this equation to calculate. So we're gonna have this natural log of K2 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative three. And that's going to be in the um, liters, I'm sorry, L per mole. 
and then that's going to equal 46700 joules per mole. And the reason that we're putting that into joules is because our R value is already in joules. So we're going to use that same 8.31 joules per mole times K. And now you can see if we're solving for a different variable, uh, we're, we're going to end up with, you know, we're going to get the units that, that, you know, for K rather than the units for T like we did in the last two. I'm sorry, for the, yeah. So here we go. Now we have 1 over what's going to be our, so our T1 value is going to be 279. Okay. Kind of wrote it a little weird there, but I think it'll be okay. 8.37K. And then we'll just double bracket that, put a minus sign in between there. All right, and now we can start solving. So in this case, we can't start with the natural log like we did in the previous one, so we're going to have a different type of step for solving that, but we can work from the middle. So we have 5619.7, okay? Because we have joules per mole, joules per mole, we're left with just K. And then over here, we're going to get 4.2966 times 10 to the negative 4. And then we're going to multiply that out. This is all equal to K2 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3 L per mole. So what we're going to get here, it's going to equal 2.4146 natural log of K2 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3. So what we're going to do to resolve this, or the first thing that we're trying to get rid of is the natural log here. And we have a whole number, you know, we have a number and we have a, a log with the variable on top. What we're going to have to do is we're going to raise both sides to the E. So we have E natural log of K2 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to the E of 2.4146. And the way I do that, everyone's calculator is different, but my calculator here, it's going to be, so 2.4146, and then I hit the second, and then I have this E here, E to the X. That's what I'm going to get for that. So here now I have K2, we got rid of the natural log, 8.6 times 10 to the negative third L per mole is going to equal 11.19. <clears throat> and then from there what we can do We can do this, and then we're just going to multiply both sides by times, oops, times 8.6 times 10 to the negative third times 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3. And then what we're going to get there is our K2 equals 0 0.096. It's going to be L per mole. Or we can say it's 9.6 times 10 to the negative 2 L per mole. Now the thing with these calculations are, there, there's like one other, I don't know if it's really a shortcut, but, but another way that I think is useful to conceptualize it, like for instance over here, you have the natural log of K2 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3. Another way that that can be written though is like this, the natural log of k2 times 1 over 8.6 times 10 to the negative 3. Because really what this is, is 1 times k2. It's one of that variable. So um, you can separate it k2 times 1 over 8.6. Then this right here, it's all, it's all numbers, so you can solve it. That's going to be natural log of 116.28 times k2. 
So that's just, you know, you, you still, you didn't solve for the variable, but you, you basically, you put it in a way that is a little bit easier, I think, to work with, depending on the circumstance. In this case, you know, it wasn't necessary because you just use the E function, but, uh, you know, it theoretically makes it a little bit easier if you don't have that option. So yeah, that is the Arrhenius equation and how to solve for activation energy. And uh, hopefully this helps someone.